Happy Thursday, everybody. Thank you so much for downloading or streaming the Be Our Guest podcast. The following is the live call-in show for this past Sunday night, September 8th, 2024. Scotty G joins me, and we talk Disney. We get a couple of great calls. We talk a little run Disney from this past weekend. Of course, it was the kickoff for the 2024-25 run Disney season with the Halloween races out at Disneyland. We have listener Jason call in. He is a local down at... uh, down in Central Florida, and we talk about what's going on in the parks down there. And we have a great discussion about the TTC and what that means to a local. It's great for us that uh, travel down to Walt Disney World and stay at the resorts because we could take a bus directly into the Magic Kingdom. But it is kind of something that the locals have to deal with every time they want to visit the Magic Kingdom. And uh, we get a great call as well about a uh, Mike calls in from New Jersey, and he's headed to Disneyland for the first time here in three weeks. We have a great discussion about that as well. Don't forget our show brought to you by The Magic for Less Travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney adventure for no additional cost to you. Check out all the details right now over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link when you shop online. That one extra click supports everything we do throughout the year. It's brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you again to our Patreon supporters. You guys keep this show on the air. You make everything possible. So thank you so very much to you. You can support us as well, just $5 a month, and you'll get a bonus show every week called Mike in the Midwest. Coming over this week, we'd love to have you. Patreon.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Ready to take a trip to the world? You found the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. This is where your memories come front and center on our podcast stage. Well, hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the BOGP Open Line for Sunday night, September 8th, 2024. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at The Magic for Less Travel. Happy Sunday night to you. Hope you had a great weekend. We had a good one around here in Missouri. 2-0 Missouri Tigers, ranked six in the country, number one in your hearts. We're having a great time. We're going to be taking your calls over the next hour at 407-413-9395, 407-413-9395. We can talk about the Run Disney races out on the West Coast, out in Anaheim. Good job, Lizards. We could talk about the Food and Wine Festival happening down at Walt Disney World right now. Anything that's on your mind, the phone lines are open to speak with you over the next hour. But joining me, he's back. Scotty G up in the mitten. His Spartans are also 2-0. and First place in the Big Ten that has 37 members this year. What is up, Scotty G? Hey, Mike. Happy to be here. Um, the the Big Ten commercial is funny now. It used to just like how they do like the flyover of the country. And it was <laughs> very isolated do. to the Midwest. And now it starts off like in the Pacific Northwest, makes its way to Southern California. Then it shoots all the way, even all the way over to New Jersey. It is a funny commercial to see now. But yeah. But hey, we're in first place there. But in a couple of years, man, it might go over like England. It might go to South America. <laughs> it might. I can't wait for Hawaii to join the Big Ten. <laughs> exactly. You know? But you know. yeah, having a, having an okay weekend. I feel like a little under the weather, but uh, you know what? I, nothing that makes me happier than recording this episode, listening to the taking those calls from our listeners. But on the Discord a few weeks ago, um, we don't talk about just Disney there. We talk about life on there. And you asked the it's question cheers. about yeah, it's yeah. cheers. We just hang out. It's the cheers, right? You asked the question if um if everyone's high school seniors paint like their parking spot. Cause I feel like that's a newer trend and our school does. And my senior did that today. And I'll tell you, Mike, it is a commitment. It took her over six and a half hours oh. to paint that spot. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Exactly. Luckily we had good weather for it, but, uh, she, and I asked her like, are you going to, are you, are you going to do something Disney with it? You know? And like, as she gets older, like Disney is still like part of her, but it's not like a hundred percent her brand. Like it's like you and mine and like right, a bunch right. of us, right? It's mm-hmm. still a huge part of her life. So I like what she did though. She so she made it this cute base color and put some flowers, wrote her name, class twenty five, put her handprints on there, and she put like these kind of like polka dots on there. But one of the polka dots is a hidden Mickey. So very nice. proud of Emily for at least putting a little Disney touch on there. So it, is it on social media somewhere at this point? It has to be. Uh, right? I haven't. Sh- I'll share. I'll share it okay. after the episode because we yeah. got to see it. Okay, cool. And uh, so, like, what's the requirement at the school? Like, do you have one day everybody does one on the same day, or do you get so, like, everyone was day? there today? So that's got to be madness. Um, and it's like fifty bucks to 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 get the spot. A you know, fundraiser. Then, but it's crazy. Like they don't like repave the 
the blacktop, which I don't know why in my mind I thought they're gonna like repave it, but no, no, you gotta paint over the previous. No spot. way. See, I thought they would repave it in the summer so you get a fresh, like so a fresh too. palette. No. That's how I thought. It, that's how they do it at, at Howell. I think they, nope. they repave. So you had it to repave summer. over the previous spot. So that took some work, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta like repave. So that took a couple layers, you know, or prime it or whatever you gotta do. But um, but yeah, but everyone was there and it was cool. And they had a drone. Like they were just having like a good old time with the party. The weather was perfect. It was a cooler day the sun was shining all day so kudos to emily and especially my wife elizabeth for being the being there to for the support it's hard to do with like two people but um at least liz was there to like help emily take a break and take over for some of the spots a lot of parents were there today but i thought it was a fun thing and i know you mentioned it mentioned it the other day so i know next year mallory will be doing the same thing i know i like it because you're like leading me into mallory senior year because mallory's a junior so you're kind of uh you know i'm already a little because i mean Paige was a senior years ago she's 27 now so we had to go through all that a long time ago but i mean i'm not ready for it because uh this will be it for us again so you know i'm not 22 man i'm not ready to be an empty nester but we'll <laughs> i know see how that goes but <laughs> You know, there's freedom to that. But anyway, so here's the deal. When people call in tonight at 407-413-9395 and we want calls tonight, here's the question that you have to answer before we get to whatever's on your mind. If you had a Disney parking spot, if you had a parking spot in high school that you had to decorate in Disney fashion, how would you paint that parking spot? Would it be Neverland from the Peter Pan attraction? You know, like you're flying over Neverland. Would it be Cinderella Castle? Would it be the hull of a Disney cruise line ship? How would you put a Disney spin on your parking spot at your high school if you could go back in time? Because again, the kids nowadays get all the fun stuff. This wasn't I a know. thing back then. Dude, I didn't even get a parking spot. Like we, we weren't even allowed to park at school. I had right. to illegally park in a neighborhood, my MGB. I drove a 72 MGB back in the day. And just hope it didn't get towed all day during school and like hoof it. Like, I mean, I almost I almost, I almost walked as far to school as I live from school, just so I could drive to school. But we weren't allowed to park on campus. No way. Are you kidding me? And no, I know. Does. It's kind of funny now. And they're, and their lot is huge. <laughs> they have a huge, <laughs> a huge lot. That's super nice. I will say that when I post that picture, look, look at the spot in front of Emily's. Um, there is a, a car steam spot. It says ka-chow. Nice. So, yeah. So I know you would like that, Mike, because oh, yeah. your, uh, your nephew is a big cars fan. That's right. Ka-chow. See, I got to get my board ready. I got too many buttons now. Uh, yeah. So Terry down in Florida says haunted mansion. Now, see, that'd be a good one, right? And nowadays there's even like glow in the dark paint. You but you're going to have to spend and... like 12 hours painting because if you want to be detailed, that's the thing. Some of these things just take so long to paint. Yeah. That'd be sweet. But you oh my commit. gosh. I like the haunted mansion one. I, like I would like haunted mansion. I'm trying to think mine. I see right now. I think I'd have to go cruise line. Something cruise oh, line. You would do I, a ship. Like, yeah. Like a ship. Like like that palette of that deep blue. There's actually the the name of that blue because I had this at trivia this summer. It's like the it's like a lady's name. I forget because some lady came to a meeting and that was the color of her slacks. And I should remember this. I'm getting old. But that's like the name of the like the hull is not black on the Disney Cruise Line ships. It's like a real real deep blue, and it's like Lorraine or something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. I think it starts with an L, but like that kind of palette of blue with like that gold kind of fancy. Maybe I'd do it like that, but see, I'd have to hire somebody like maybe our listener, John Rose, who's an art teacher down in the Ozarks. He's done murals all around Branson, which I've seen and they're amazing. And he does murals kind of on the side for folks. I, I just have to have him come up to St. Louis and just give him a little side money. Cause it'd be, a, I'd have the best one on the lot. Yeah. I'd, I'd have to hire someone from mine, <laughs> but, but what I would do, I would give him this photograph of old key west with my pa- facing olivia's with the palm trees so i just want that shot it's like oh, my old it's key my ultimate west. disney shot with the palm trees and then you can see olivia's and the pool and the entryway oh, to old key west the light and that is me because resorts is my thing so i just want that on my parking space right there yeah the lighthouse and by the way we, so we got francois he's tuned in right now from bar riva dude fell for that over at the riff and we have let's see here uh somebody else tuned in uh gina listener gina over on facebook is tuned in from ba- baseline tap house right now waiting oh. out a rain shower best best theme park ride i hear i mean check this out people are at walt disney world right now tuning us in so have a good time and ride out that rain i hope it doesn't rain very long i know i was gonna say like so i get weather reports right like we all i think all of us have walt disney world weather in one of our many weather apps 
And I've been getting like, all these like lightning has been seen in the area a lot lately for uh, Walt Disney World. So hope everyone's staying safe. That's down there for sure. Absolutely. And tonight, I believe at Food and Wine, uh, the band is Yellow Card. And I saw that there was a huge, huge long line uh, to get in for this performance. Never heard of Yellow Card. Have you? Yeah, I'm sure the line was all the way down Ocean Avenue waiting for them <laughs> yeah. to get. Have you, have you heard of Yellow Card? I've never heard of this band. Yeah, I, I just referenced one of their songs. Yes. I've oh, heard did you saw a guy? I didn't you know, see. I've never <laughs> yeah. heard of them. Well, they're on that, and they're featured on right that new. Me. Right over my They're head. featured on that new record that just released of like, like bands doing covers of like Disney songs. Like, didn't Apple or oh that one that we're a... talking about in the Discord of like the uh, the alternative like that yeah, purple yeah. And so green yellow card one? is on that as well. Okay. Yeah, yellow, yellow card. Yeah, I mean they were like early two thousands. Is kind of like yeah, where they kind of where they kind of came out. But yeah, I mean they're they're kind of like that California punkish kind of rock thing. But I, I dig it. Alternative. I like them though. Oh, oh. The if Francois Ocean was, Avenue. You should look at Ocean Avenue. You've definitely heard that song before. I'm, Ocean Avenue. See, I DJ'd around that time, so maybe I don't remember. I'd sing it, but then we get hit with some copy. Yeah, we don't get hit with And, that, I'm that great man, and we'll get hit with people turning us off too. So you know, I mean, you no, know, seriously. So yeah, I yeah, Ocean Avenue. I'll check that out. Because I was a DJ in those times and I played like a lot of proms and weddings and stuff. It just it doesn't ring a bell, huh? Anyway, uh, uh, Francois says he went to Hobo Stank on Friday. And I do remember playing Hobo Stank's song. There was a song by them that was popular. I can't remember what it was, but uh, yeah. So anyway, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hobo Stank had a Tangentially several. food and wine here. But hey, let's talk about the Run Disney races. And congratulations again to everybody who ran through the heat out on the West Coast this past weekend, wrapping it up uh, to this morning with 13 miles. We had the 5 to 10 and a half. Looked pretty amazing uh, on social media. What'd you see? I mean, did you look at the, any of the pictures? I saw some cool costumes. I saw Neil rocking the uh, Mr. Toad steering wheel, looking like Toad. And I think today he was the uh, the grizzly bear. So he was grizzly, grizzly for River the 10K. Runs. And the that 10? was my favorite one. Yeah. I knew. So I had a sneak peek from him several weeks ago that he was going to do Toad. But uh, I did not know about the grizzly bear, which is like my, I love that thing. That and like it's always decorated around the holidays right now. It's holding the pumpkin, and he had the pumpkin and everything, too. So well done there. The best, though, was our friend Lori in the Lizards, who always crushes costumes. And she was like Madame Leota. I don't know if you saw that. Like It was like the most insane costume. I think who I've wait, who was that? Who was Madame Leota? Uh, I, I, think, I think it's Lori is okay. her name. Lori? Okay, cool. I didn't see um, it. I got to go back. She does all the races. Back. She does Princess Marathon. Like She always crushes the costumes. I remember for the last Disneyland race, you did like a Timothy Q mouse thing because Emily was doing something similar too. But like her Madame Leota thing, like what I mean, her face was painted blue, like had all like all this blue lighting. She had like no arms, like her head was like on a table. It was the most detailed and like incredible run Disney costume. I, I applaud her very much. I you, sh- yeah, you'll find it, man. There's like a hundred comments from the lizards on it. I mean, it just blew up I, yesterday. See, that's the thing is like I the level of dedication to somebody that does that one to create a costume like that, right? It takes so right. much work to create that, but then to go through even a five K to go three miles being that uncomfortable. I know. I can't believe it. Like I, well, that, one that, time that was I ran 10 K. So that was like six miles. Like yeah, that's unbelievable. Cause like one time I ran a 10 K it was a princess and I thought it'd be a good idea. Cause I had some green. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. So, it's so Scotty so for, for our audio folks, Scotty so is holding good. up his phone to the camera, showing it. And again, you go to be our guest podcast or youtube.com slash be our guest podcast, see the video anytime, but that it's is like crazy. legit like a top tier costume. So that's the thing is even if you walk six miles, that has got to be extremely uncomfortable. Like I ran a 10 K one time with just like some wings I bought at the expo. Cause like at the last second I was like, Oh our, our colors are green, right? You know, like we have green shirts and how funny would it be because I'm like six foot three. If I was like the world's tallest Tinkerbell, because I was a princess, I'm going to buy some wings that have lights on them. Cause they were selling them cheap at the expo. Dude, those things beat me up for six miles. I'm like, I am never doing that again. It was so uncomfortable. So yeah. And people like, you know, like, like Neil's got the steering wheel and uh, these people all have these apparatus on strapped to them. No, like, <laughs> No, I can't. Yeah. I can't. It's and, hard enough and, to get And there. the other problem is, so this used to, this is one week after they used to do the regular Disneyland half. So I did that a few times, like Labor Day weekend. And it, it was always blazing hot that weekend. So when they announced these dates, I was kind of worried. I'm like, 
man, those first couple weeks of September are always smoking hot in Anaheim. And sure enough, Mike, it was almost like 100 degrees this weekend. So the fact that you're running in that costume too, like in that heat, like my my goodness, like I hope everyone stayed safe and like hydrated out there and didn't go for any crazy PRs. I, I haven't heard any reports on our Lizards page or like anyone – having a bad race, but my gosh, I hope everyone slowed down a bit because it was smoking hot there this weekend. Yes. Oh, and we have a call, so let's get to it. Yeah, one of the other best costumes I saw was, hang on, just one second, caller, was somebody, it was just a lady that had a thing that said, I love how the idea of Halloween races that like goes on one sign, and then it, the other sign said, except for the fact that it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> yes. You know, like, I love the idea of Halloween, the Halloween. but not that it's 100 degrees because it was so hot. But all right, we have... I had to reset Skype for some reason. The Skype wasn't answering again, but here we are. First caller of the night. Who's joining us? Hello, caller. I hear you. Do you hear him, Scott? I hear nothing. You do not hear. I see somebody from the 207 area code. Don't, I just love live radio. It's I do best. too, man. It is awesome. Nope, they dropped off. All right. I did like it when they did the race over Labor Day weekend, though, even though it was hot. And Amanda was saying it was cooler there last week. I was I was not paying attention to the temps last week, and so that would have been great if it would have been then. But, like, I loved going there for Labor Day weekend because I had that extra day. And you know me, Mike, I'm always planning around holidays and all that. So we could go leave on a Thursday, come back on a Monday, and just have a nice run Disney weekend in Disneyland and only had to use one day of PTO. Mm, man, I love that. That's that what we good. did for uh, the last time because it was over uh, Martin Luther King weekend. That is that true. Out pretty good. That is true. All right. They're calling back 207. Hey, you there? Hello, caller. Ah, they keep dropping. And they're off. like me. I was having technical they were, they were audio technical. issues. Here we got another caller. Let's see from the 561. Hey, 561, are you there? Hello, caller. Oh, is this a mic Skype thing? This must be a Skype thing. Shoot. All right, we're going to reset Skype is what we're going to do. So let's do that. That's easily fixable. So I don't hang. think I can hear him. Oh, 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 we heard you. They can't hear me, though, I guess. Oh, okay. they can't hear us. That's where the problem is. You're bringing them. You're bringing them on the air and they don't know that they're being brought in. That's exactly it. Let me reset Skype. So we're going to do a little Skype reset here. But yeah, so the I mean, the costumes are great. It was it was hot. Uh, I just love though, like the idea of a Halloween race. You know, I just wish it would but the kind of like the old Tower of Terror. Like I wish it would be like a like a ten mile run later in the year. You know, so it's a little bit cooler. I know. I, oh, I wish it wasn't like during. It's hard for me during football because I got to go to Mallory's cheer games. Hey, call. Are you there? Can you hear us? They cannot. Hey. I called in, but I always check everything before the shows, and I could hear when I called in, and I could I hear you. both ways. This is wild. I know you do. I know you're very particular about I this. I am. Hey, call, are you there? It's the best when you have, like, a live call-in show, and it the is. calls don't work. <laughs> it is. It is the worst. All right, so we are going to uh, go, like, we're going to go all the way to a reset. We're going to. Oh, it was our buddy Jason that was calling too. Jason, give us a second because I am going to totally restart the, the computer that takes the calls. And this should fix it. I was trying not to have to restart the computer, but it's a laptop, so it restarts really fast. So what were you talking about on Friday's episode? Was that something about Crescent so, Lake? I, yes, didn't, I did, had not we, listened to the episode yet. So we went all the way back to the Trapped In series where we had a day where you couldn't leave the Crescent Lake area. So you had to have breakfast, lunch, dinner, entertainment at either beach, okay. yacht, or boardwalk, swan or dolphin. And so we made the most of that. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, that's um, one of the premier locations, I'd say, to be at Walt Disney World, for sure, for all those things. Because there's lots of entertainment, lots of great dining options. You can see some firework, some firework viewing, even yep. from those resorts, even though... Like Magic Kingdom area obviously comes top of mind when you think of firework, firework viewing resorts, but those babies shoot up high. You can see them in a lot of resorts. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Well, and if you think about it too, you got, let's see here, you got um, two of the best pools on property, I think. I mean, you got Storm Along Bay, which is the best, and you also have uh, the, the pool at the Boardwalk, which I think is probably the second best pool. You have some of the best dining in Yachtsman. You got Ale and Compass. You got good casual dining in Beaches and Cream. You have Fantasia Gardens you could walk to, so you could play putt-putt, which is pretty sweet. 
You got places like the Fountain that nobody thinks of, that new Rosa Mexicana, which I got to get to, which everybody's oh, yeah. raving about. So there's lots of options there. Okay, it's rebooted. So if you want to give, I just struggle with like something. the counter service. Even though I'm not the biggest counter service person, but like the Yacht and Beach, like you just go into that marketplace, and the, the options are pretty limited there. We talked about Hurricane that. Hannah's is great, I think, when it's open, but it's, yep. it, it seems like that's hit or miss, like with the hours on Hurricane Hannah. And I will, I mean, I've never cared for the Boardwalk Bakery. I know it has a pretty nice following fan base, so so d- don't don't destroy me on this one. But like that is just not my ideal spot i just i never really cared for the boardwalk bakery for some reason Ooh, i like the crumb cake the coffee cake or crumb cake whatever it's called all right we have a caller back on let's see if it works hello hello caller wait let me try this let's try this call you there live uh, caller can you no, hear us i got nothing can't hear anything dang oh when we can hear them i know <laughs> it's like a tease uh-huh. Hang on. All right. One more thing. Let me try one more thing and then we're going to try it. We're just going to go to the video calls. These are going to be the best ratings for Be Our Guest podcast. It's going to be today. terrible ratings, but <laughs> what can we do? So let's do this. Let's make sure we have everything. So we got the MacBook Air out on the USB. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm, and I'm not saying the Boardwalk Bakery is like the worst thing. It's just, I just wish there was like a, a, a different option or an additional option. I don't want to get rid of the Boardwalk Bakery by any means because like, those i mean those sandwiches and the pastries are nice like but i just want to have like more of a uh i don't know i don't know what it is that i want like a bounty platter of some sort <laughs> not that i need more bounty platters at walt disney world because like there's so many of those that you can get at so many different places but so that's i guess one of the nicer things about the boardwalk bakery they have some different options i would say compared to some of the other like counter service places and quotes but, but yeah like let's get that cake shop open let's Let's get some. I would love to see another counter service place open in general for the boardwalk. And Mike just gave me the the pointer, so he's gonna leave. So, uh, so I guess it's just me. So we're gonna I'm gonna hijack the podcast now. So, so in the chat, throw a question about whatever you want to talk about. Um, Mike has left me in the studio with no way to control what the calls are. So that's always fun. And. <laughs> It was just a loose wire. I'm good. It was a loose wire. It was a loose wire. Hey, I have I have Veronica agreeing with me though about my random rant about the boardwalk bakery, which I had no intention of doing today, which is kind of funny. Um I think we're good. But but yeah, for more, I mean, would you consider like beaches and cream a counter service though? Mm, yes. It's like a it's like yes. a tweener almost, you know, like because kind of no you have to make a reservation. It is a tweener. It is a tweener. You have to order with a server, you don't order at a counter. All right, the, call, call say, one honestly, more time. Here we go. This should work. Please, God. And honestly, I think the pricing of Beaches and Cream is like more on par with like a table service. It, well, it so definitely almost, is pricing wise. All yeah, right, I this is consider amateur, a table service these days. You've definitely called Amateur Hour. Uh, hello, caller. Is it? We're we're good. I think I can hear you guys. Yeah, this is Amateur Hour because uh, somebody bumped into my board and uh, way back there, one of my uh, cords came loose. Uh, but it was still plugged in. It just wasn't uh, all the way in there. So yes, this is Professional Radio One Hundred and One. Uh, and but we're here. That's okay. It's it's like a uh, it's like the NFL teams today in Week One. There's hiccups and you know stuff oh. doesn't go right. So you yeah. know it's fine. I thought it was more. I thought we're it was more like the Florida it. State Seminoles. <laughs> Okay, honestly, yeah, it's so nice that your college football teams are winning. I'm I'm very happy for you guys. I uh, I don't know what that feels like this you, year. I was about to say, if the next call doesn't work, I am going to take a red solo cup and uh, eat. Oh, uh, no, geez. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy. I I don't know what uh I don't know what he's doing right now, but not a uh, not a great moment for him. Oh my God, the whole internet's after that poor guy, but he should have never, my wife said he should have never said it. I'm like, yes, you should never say that stuff in the internet, but the internet should let the dude, he's, he's a Seminoles fan. That's enough right now. Just let the guy live, but let him be. But anyway, it's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny because he probably just tweeted that without thinking of anything. Like he'd probably get like one or two likes. And then now he's just blown up over the internet. Yeah. 
I, that's she just told me to be careful what you say, Mike, because you people will come at you. I'm like, yes, you're right. This is a lesson, and just you watch your mouth. <laughs> so what's well, people are people are coming? People are going to come after Scott for his uh, for his small world takes. Uh, exactly. He Dude, he hates come, he hates. I think small I lost world. subscribers to the to our YouTube <laughs> I, I'm for real. <laughs> the, it was the first time I, I've only seen the numbers drop once, and it was after that episode aired. So I'm just I'm not saying it's a coincidence. <laughs> Correlation does not uh, equal causation. And I didn't even mean like I wanted it to go away. I was just trying to make interesting conversation is all. But uh, but Jason, <laughs> so we talked about my daughter painting her senior parking spot. And Mike said, what would be your parking spot for like Disney? So I want to know, what, what would your parking spot, what would you paint it to that would be Disney themed? That would that's a great question. I know someone said living with the land. I think that would be a strong contender for me. Um, I'm not an artist, but maybe I would try the Spaceship Earth mur mural. Uh, I'd probably Ooh. turn out awful, but I'd give it a shot. I like that. I um, love that a lot, actually. Either that or maybe a cor maybe something like Coronado themed or something. I don't know. I think I'd go one of those three. You can't go wrong. Maybe you could do like a trio. Because you know when you go to Walt Disney World's webpage, they have like the four icons, you know, as like a long banner. Maybe you could do something like that. Like yeah. where you have like a Coronado Tower, the mural in the middle somewhere, and then you have like living with the land off the side. I feel like you got to have one more thing though for balance. Or, or you could do a trio maybe. Yeah, you could maybe do a trio. You could even, I could even throw in, I don't know, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, so maybe like a Pirates or something. I really like Pirates of the Caribbean. Maybe throw that off to the side too or something like that. Is that something you've noticed down in Florida? Do they do that at the high schools where they paint the parking spots for the seniors? It's funny. I I never did that. Um, Vern, before I hopped on here, Vern said that her high school, they were supposed to do it, but I think somebody got in trouble, so they discontinued <laughs> of course, it. Of course. Um, but no, my high school, we didn't do anything like that. We just kind of had like senior crowns where you like painted like your own like crown or whatever. But that was all we had. Huh. Nice. I yeah. told Emily you should have had a QR code on there though that took you to the YouTube channel. That was like the only <laughs> only miss that you're had. all about promotion, <laughs> dude. You're you're into it. Man. I love it. Oh my god. Honestly, that would have been cool because if they like take because they're obviously gonna like take a picture or whatever, yeah, like an are. overhead picture. <laughs> Somebody will get curious and be like, oh, I wonder what that QR code looks like. And then they're going to go to the YouTube channel. Exactly. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. So, so how are things going down there? What's uh, You guys been over to, uh, I know you went to Food and Wine. You're talking about that, but uh, what, what else is going on? Yeah, Food and Wine. Um, there's a lot of good uh, like meat-centered dishes. Um, the bison I had was really good. Didn't like the sides and toppings on it. Um, that uh baked chocolate chip pudding cake oh, oh my gosh that dude. was i think i i ate that thing in maybe 20 25 seconds it was so good you got to post a warning before you post something like that in the discord man i was just like, i know I, oh. I i i feel like the discord kind of got a little hungrier after i uh, posted that but yeah, man it was so good that looked i feel like old. if you do that though in the discord if you put warning on something everyone's gonna look at it like, I, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get yeah, more views it didn't matter <laughs> Yeah, you can't put the spoiler tag on there because then everyone's going to like wipe away and look at it and then all of a sudden <laughs> everyone's hungry. Yes. Oh, man, it looks so um, good. Wait, what booth? What, what, there's there's not many like vegan or like veg vegetarian options this year or something? or um, Not as much as like a flower and garden. I feel like flower and garden, you see more of those vegan vegetarian options. Um, but for the most part with food and wine, you'll see like at least one thing on, I would say most of the festival booths. Um, so Vern always had something to eat. Um, we also went over to Macatizers, which is in Communicore Hall. Um, there's like a full kitchen and I, we didn't know that that existed, but there's like a full kitchen in Communicore Hall. So they were dishing out mac and cheese dishes there. Macatizers, um, I love it. I do too. Just, it was good. I had I had like a uh, it was basically like a Philly cheese steak, but with like mac and cheese. Oh um, it was pretty delicious, and the portion size I think was the biggest out of all the food and wine like options you have. So at least it kind of sort of fills you up a little there. But um, yeah, no, good start to food and wine. Um, How would you say the the crowd level kinda, was? Because we have a friend from the Discord that's down there right now, like doing updates, and they she said it was pretty low. 
I know you were in there last night at Magic Kingdom. How do you, how do you feel the crowd levels are after Labor Day? Yeah, crowd levels were pretty low last night. Um, we, I mean, you saw the picture in the Discord. We got to see Happily Ever After from, like, the center of the hub. So didn't really have any issues finding room there. Um, actually, we we went on Thunder Mountain after, and then we were walking by Kiana's, and we were like, you know what? And I, I don't know if I would advise this or not, but we went up to the cast member, and we were like, look, you know, park's going to close in five minutes. Is there any chance we can get on Tiana's? It's okay if, if you say no, it's fine. Like not a big deal. She's like, yeah, go ahead. Just, you know, go to the standby line. So we got to ride Tiana's at night and man, that ambiance and everything was, it was a game changer. That's fantastic. I, I feel the magic kingdom, 80% of the magic kingdom is 80% better at night. You know, it just, it just is, especially like anything that has water is better at night. Big Thunder's better at night. Even, I don't know, Space Mountain feels better at night for some reason. Maybe because your eyes are already adjusted and you go in and it's already dark. I, I, I don't know, like especially Jungle I, Cruise. I mean, better at night. There's so much it's better at night. I have two reasons why I think that, because I agree with you, Mike. And we'll have Jason chime in too as a local. One is I think it's just because the temps are cooler. It's cooler, yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> it's more oh, comfortable yeah, at yeah. night. You're just you're more lights, chill. I just I just love the light package throughout the whole park, like yeah. in Tomorrowland especially, but like in Fantasyland too. I just love seeing everything lit up, and that just like makes me happy when I see that. And maybe it's not wrong. I love it in the daytime either. too. Yeah, yeah. We so when we rode Big Thunder, some of the smoke from Happily Ever After was still kind of lingering, lingering in the air. Um, I don't know how that happens, but it was. And like the lighting and stuff on Big Thunder was kind of clashing with that smoke and everything. It just made the ambiance like so much better. Uh, we were also back row of Big Thunder, which is a completely different ride than the front row. So that was just, that was a whole thing. Um, we also on the drop of Tiana's, I don't know if it was the smoke or it was mist or something, but we got like, pelted in the eyes with water so that was and we've we've done tiana's a couple times now and that's never happened so that was that was an interesting experience but we kind of you kind of had to close your eyes and you're just getting like like pelted with water have, have you guys noticed too like uh more uh like uh pe- folks going over to tom sawyer island and and just i mean i don't know if you guys are heading over there but i, I saw like lou did his meet of the month over there he did near where aunt polly's was and he was giving out uncrustables i think today or yesterday which i thought was a genius idea i love that idea because they used to serve them. that over is there. an awesome idea <laughs> <It's like laughs> on awesome. i love uncrustables man we have some in the free they're great in the freezer you just let them like pop them out let them sit for like five or ten minutes and they're like the perfect like uh temperature oh so good like almost a little I can donuts. live off of peanut butter and honey <laughs> uncrustables. They are just so good. Oh, dude, we, um, we get along so well. We should be brothers. They're like we should all be brothers. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Come on, down, you, you take a trip on down. I'll have the peanut butter and honey uncrustables <laughs> in the freezer, and we'll, we'll, we'll let's do it. Just Mike, just come down the Fort Wilderness for your birthday. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, man, it, it's, uh, it could happen. No, but so do you see, though, I would imagine that the, the traffic on uh, the Rivers of America on the rafts is picking up just from folks. It wouldn't be the normal guests. It would be more folks like us that are trying to get that one last shot over there to get the pictures and just to, to go through the caves and to go over to the fort and stuff. So I'm going to be brutally honest. Um, we were at Magic Kingdom during the day the other week. Um, it kind of seemed like Tom Sawyer's Island was the same. It kind of seemed, it still kind of seemed empty. The boat seemed empty. Uh, the Liberty Bell wasn't, you know, filled with people either. Um, I feel like Dinosaur over in Animal Kingdom has started to get some, like, longer wait times. So I think people are making their way over to Dinosaur first and kind of paying their Blast of Specs riding their last ride over a dinosaur. But Tom Sawyer's Island, I feel like it's kind of remained the same so far. Hmm. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Maybe maybe because there was a hard date on, you know, Tropical Americas and Animal Kingdom, whereas Tom Sawyer's Island going away, I mean, they kind of said they would start next year, but like, I don't know, when is that? You know, it's not like a hard sort of like, this date is the last date. 
So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I, I feel like there hasn't really been like an uptick or anything like that. It's funny though, because it is more of a commitment to go to Tom Sawyer Island, right? You got to queue up, you got to take the slow raft over. Once you're over there, you're kind of stuck over there for a little bit. You know, it, it's, it's a different kind of experience. You know, you go over there to walk around, you go over there to climb steps, you go over there to, but to me, I like that experience, but I'm not going to do it every trip, but I think it's going to be for everybody. I think it's going to be like that one last time, you know, I don't think everybody's going to go over there every trip. So it's, it'll be kind of funny to see how the crowd, I think it will pick up though with, I think setting a date though would, would put more urgency on it for people. You're right. That's a good point. Yeah, I think I think that hard date, whenever that comes, I think that's when you'll start to see people, you know, make their way over. But yeah, I mean, it really is kind of a chore to queue up and wait for a boat and then take the boat over. And then when you want to come back, you have to queue up again for a boat. Like and it's it's a little bit of a chore. So, yeah. So, so I have a question for you. I have a question for you, Jason. So it's just something that curious my curiosity here. So my wife can't stand the ticket and transportation center, the way she describes it, I can't even say it on air. I don't think it's friendly enough for our, for our audience. But as a Central Florida local, as someone that just, as someone, okay. <laughs> I'm just getting the button, right. making sure the button's hot. Go ahead. That's basically it. That's basically <laughs> the but, oh my and God. I feel similar, but like she just, she refuses now. But as a Central Florida local, assuming, you know, that's where you go most of the time to park, like I'm thinking like last night, I know you popped in there basically to watch Happily Ever After, Road Big Thunder, Tiana's. So say you park there, you know, when, when you go visit, what are you taking? Are you taking the monorail or the ferry boat or do you switch it up? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, we do switch it up. At least we have now. Um, I think it kind of just depends on if we, if we see a ferry boat just dock there, we'll probably just go and take the ferry boat because it's docked there. Probably don't have to wait all that long. Um, if we see the monorail pull up then you know, we'll probably just roll up with the monorail. So I think a lot of it just kind of depends on the timing. If we kind of get to the middle of the TTC and look around and see like, you know, what transportation is like either coming in or already there. Um, and then I think just like crowd level too, if, if you see the, uh, monorail line kind of back up towards that, like, you know, ramp area. Maybe they'll go over to the ferry boat. Um, and then if you see the ferry boat kind of heavily populated, we'll go over to the monorail. Listener Michael, who's tuned in over on YouTube this evening as we record live, has a great idea. They should put Surrey bikes at the TTC that you could ride back and forth. I mean, hey, oh you could probably gosh. get there just as quick. <laughs> That's a good point. You would You'd you would hot. have the strongest legs in the world if you Surrey biked from the TTC to the Magic Kingdom, assuming there's a you know walkway available. Wow, I better mean to think about that. It's your it's your fitness for the day. Then you get there, boom, Mickey Bar. You don't feel guilty, and you rock on. Just right down Main Street, you know, get your get your Starbucks for the day. Bam. Yeah, yeah That's how honestly, I feel about that idea. But also, Scott, I do agree with your wife. The TTC can be kind of a headache. Um, we we kind of had that thought when we were going last night, we were like, uh, you know, it's hopefully it's not an hour to when you park to when you, you know, scan into the magic kingdom. Um, so that can be kind of a drag. So we think about that all the time. We always like play that game. Like, Oh, like if we were living in Walt Disney world or central Florida today, what would we be doing on the Saturday? And then very rarely do we bring up magic kingdom. Cause we're like, well, <laughs> we're going to have to park and then like walk up and then do all this. And then when we leave for the night, we're going to have to do all that again. Like, well, that's two hours of our time, but does it, but I guess we can afford two hours cause we live here and we can do it all the time. So it's always like in my mind, like what do, how do locals feel about it? And it sounds like you and Veronica are on the same page as team gardener here and probably most of the population. Well, see, for me, I think the magic kingdom would be something that I would, if I was a local, it'd be like a secondary park, right? I would be like, I would probably go to Epcot and like this again, as a local, if you're only hopping in for two hours, this would scrub the idea, right? If you're just going for dinner. Right. So I probably wouldn't just go there for like after work or something, but if I had a day or, you know, five hours, I might go to Epcot for a couple hours, hop on the monorail, jump over there for a little bit and then come back to my car at Epcot or something. But you're right. Yeah. TCC. It would, that does, it, I like the, I, that's the thing is it's a love hate thing. Cause I like how it, the idea of it to keep the parking lot and to, to escape reality that once you get on the monorail, the ferry boat, you're leaving everything that's, that's exactly. chaotic. And that's the real world behind. I love that idea, but it does. 
it's a logistical problem to get there in any kind of efficient manner. It it's it, it's there's yin and yang to, to to that. I get it. And if you're local, yeah, you gotta deal with it, it more. It's kind of tough. And as a local, I feel like we do go to Epcot more than any of the other parks. Um, yeah, it's just it's tough. Like if you when we leave Magic Kingdom, we never leave like direct. I mean, I guess most people do this. You don't leave directly after the fireworks. We kind of just hang out and chill, um, kind of just wait till park close or even, you know, a little bit after that to kind of, you know, thin the crowd of people going to the monorail or the ferry boat. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I agree with you. It feels like such a cool idea. And I feel like it's, it's, when you're, when I was a kid, I, I love the monorail to death. That was one of my favorite things, but now as an adult, I'm like, uh, this, uh, this kind of stinks. I'm not going to lie. It's, <laughs> I still love the monorail. I just wish yeah. on 45 to an hour yeah. before. I just you know, wish guests took better care of it. Yeah, I'm with you there. Guess guess trash it sometimes. I just that I don't like seeing the monorail trash. Like it bugs me so much. That's why I don't ride it as much. And as the, as that has everything to do with the the guests, I think more than cast members. But um, but what can you do, right? I still I still love the monorail though. But dang, I just wish it was respected better than it was than it is right now. But I think this whole thing. Yeah, is and I it, feel like it's kind of about that time for them to uh, switch out the monorails to the next version. But I don't know. We'll see whenever that happens. It is. It is funny though because I think Walt Disney World is set up for the for the vacationer, right, to come down as opposed to the locals because it for is sure. it is fine for the vacationer that's coming in using the Disney transportation system. It's geared towards that, right? Because the bus is going to drop you off to where you walk right into the Magic Kingdom, and you you. Sur- you don't have to worry about the TTC, you know, you, that's, that's, that's not a uh, problem. So you can, you know, you can ride the express or the resort monorail to get around to, to a dinner at Kona or to go over to have chef Mickey's or something like that. But it's there, you know, for folks that need it. But you know, if you're staying as a resort guest, you don't encounter that kind of frustration. So yeah, it is. It's one of those things I get it, but yep. So yeah. but you, I know, got, you got to get to live there like though. Resort. It's pretty sweet. Uh, I, I was just going to say, I know resort perks aren't like as good as they were before, but I feel like that's just even a perk to just not having to deal with the TTC. I feel like that <laughs> exactly that alleviates a lot of a lot of stress that some people may not like know or may not, you know, see or anything. But yeah, that that alleviates a lot of it. Yeah, I always say, you know, if you have a car and you want to get there quick, drive, but don't drive to the Magic Kingdom. Take a bus. Take a bus to the Magic yep. Kingdom. It just gets you around all that. All right. So anything uh, you guys have anything on the plans here soon for the I mean, you guys probably just do things spur of the moment, I guess. Yeah, no, it's the football season, so it's kind of hunker down, you know, the football life, all that fun stuff. Trying to sneak out of the house and uh, I don't know, maybe walk around the resorts or have dinner somewhere, you know, just kind of get out when we can. Sounds good. Hey, I appreciate your coverage, man. I've loved it. uh, over on Twitter and, and all the places. So keep it up. It's uh, for somebody that's a football junkie like me and a Disney junkie. It's uh, the perfect combo. So uh, appreciate all your hard work. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. When you come down for Fort Wilderness, if there's room on the golf cart, even if, even if it's the roof, we'll be there. I love it. I was about to say, like, I start booking ADRs in about three weeks and uh, we'll love to connect with you if you want to set something up. I know Thanksgiving week, right, is a big football week. You got rivalry going on, but if we can do something after the weekend, we're there for a couple more days. Like I would love to love to meet and do something, buy you a beer or whatever. So let me know. Oh, 100, 100%. We'll connect on that. We'll book ADRs. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys to experience the fort around Christmas time. That's just oh. going to be so magical. I'm so pumped for that. That that seventy dollar day cart fee hurt a little that's bit. Crazy. Cart fee hurt, but it's gonna be so worth it. That's, that's a car. That's what you get rid of car for. That. that is nuts. I promise, promise, promise. You're gonna be like I. I would have paid one hundred and seventy bucks, especially with those <laughs> Christmas lights and stuff. It's. I promise you, it's gonna be I love worth it. it. I just, I just, Mike, I just took it as like a, that's a resort fee. It know? is. That's- I mean, I would pay it too. I'm exa- I know I, I a hundred percent like would totally pay it because I know, I mean, I've been down there at Christmas. Like I've gone around there and just like, we, we've rented one of those big carts. Like they bring you with the horse. Like we've oh, yeah. done that. Like, that's fun. Like it's, it, I get it. Like the fort is awesome at Christmas and I love golf carts too. Like, so it's like a kid in a, you know, a go-kart. I get it. 
and I'd pay it in a heartbeat, but seventy dollars, man. It's like taking yeah, your dinner it, first, it, man. It's pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> you really crazy. just you really have to look at it as like a resort fee or just add it onto your per night or something. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. thing is, it was DVC points, so like I haven't, I haven't paid, I haven't paid a penny of cash, and I haven't even paid for the golf cart fee yet. It's just like a holding thing. So I was kind of hoping that I would be prepaid, so I could just be done with it in the past. But no, they're going to remind me again, Mike, when I when I check oh, in. Oh yeah, you know, still. it's going to hit that statement right then and there. Oof. But you know what? I can use my Disney gift card uh, that I buy at Target, you know, and get save five percent on it. So look at that. I'm going to say 5%. There you go. That's, that's some, something's better than nothing. You better there be driving that thing everywhere. That's all I got to oh, say. Will be. Oh, yeah. It'll be decked out. Well, Jason will be riding on the roof and all that. Awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm on the roof. Pictures. I'm 100%. I'll be the – I'll be the because some people, like, decorate their golf carts, like, Christmas style. I'll get, like, a Santa hat, and I'll just sit up there and pretend I'm a uh, – I'm like a decoration or something. Oh, that'd be awesome. Well, I mean, that's kind of like the, how the party is, right? Like Santa comes down on the sleigh and he's like, ho, 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 talking down on people. You'll just be our Santa. <laughs> You'll be our parade float. God, <laughs> I, I am I'm almost down. buying a plane ticket. This is going to be As awesome. you should. I know, I should. Yeah, Scott, or not, or Mike, just fit into Scott's luggage. There's room. I saw the YouTube video. He's got those big you know, suitcases. You can I've, just kind of squeeze dude, in I've, there. I've showed up at you his place. Who's staying at the Riv one time? And I showed yeah, up. Dude, I've, showed bed. Up. I've, yeah. I've done it, but I'm just yeah. he's showing up where I've stayed. So it's happened, but it just depends how Mizzou's doing. If that last game against Arkansas is for something. Yeah. Be, I just can't see there. you leaving Thanksgiving weekend. One of the biggest college football weekends of the year. But. I know, man. The, that Arkansas, but like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe Probably. Missouri or also, Missouri already has a spot in the SEC championship. There's not a whole lot. Stop. I don't like to do. I don't, I don't want to put the stop, dude. You're putting the hex on me. Dude. We're, I just want to know. We go one and oh. That's all we got to do this week. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Drinkwitz is going to be calling me uh, on the phone here in the next 15 minutes. All right. We got to let you go, Jason. You're breaking up. <laughs> all right. That's fine. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys. Later. We'll see you, Jason. Hey, buddy. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Tell Veronica we said hello. Bye bye. Right, I'll all right. see you guys. Right. Take care. Bye. He's a see good you. guy, man. We love talking to him. He is so yeah, I'm always, I'm always curious about that local perspective. And like, I hear it from my friend Beth, but she's like a little bit further out. So it's a little bit more a hike coming from like the Lakeland area, but like someone in central Florida, like I always just wonder like, man, do you just avoid magic kingdom just alone for the parking? Well, you know, it's like the best part. And Terry and, and Jared are they're they're on Facebook right here, and they're they're locals too. They just moved down yep. there recently, and they say, you know, again, it is difficult to get to. And they say they hop to the Magic Kingdom, kind of like I said. So they'll go over mm-hmm. from another park. But it is, it you know, it's it's the trade off though, right? You are local, so you you get to go more frequently. But I guess that would make you appreciate. But think about that, like going to Epcot for dinner or going to pick your resort, you know, Olivia's, because Olivia's is so easy to get into. You know, know, you could go there any night. You go to Disney Springs. It's just all honestly, those like I, I felt a little taste of that during the pandemic. Remember when I stayed down there for like three weeks? That's what it was like because we were working, so we would work. And then we would go to Hollywood Studios, go to Mama Melrose, right? Slinky Dog Dash, boom, because the park was closing so early. The park would be closed by then. Boom, we go back, swim, and then go to bed. And then the next day, repeat. <laughs> like, it was kind of awesome. Yeah, you did. I mean, you really did get to live down there for a little bit. You got a little small taste of... Uh, yeah, because I wasn't line. like 100% vacation because of work, you know? So like, it, it was. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I know like Pam and Steve do that quite a bit too, right? They'll, they'll work from the resort down there. And like, it's kind of nice, right? Oh man, it was a tough day of work. Where should we go to dinner? Uh, yeah, let's go to yeah. uh, let's go to Ale and Compass. Like yeah, they, did, <laughs> they awesome. do that. They do that a lot. They're always like, "Well, yeah, we just finished up. We're gonna figure out where we're gonna go to dinner." I'm like, "Stop, stop it." I know. I'm going to Taco Bell on Mid River Small Drive. But right. That gets expensive pretty quick too. <laughs> I, yeah, I, mean, I bet, man. Holy cow! Yeah, I can only imagine eating out every single night like yeah, that. Ooh. I can't do that all the time. Yeah, Michael over on uh, YouTube, Michael David says, as a non-local but frequent traveler, we usually have a car. And if we're doing a few evening uh, hours in Magic Kingdom, we'll make it on a day where we have dinner at a monorail resort. So yeah. makes sense. And also, Marion, she says uh, over here on YouTube, we need to mentally prepare for the TTC and traveling to the Magic Kingdom as a I local. believe it. Yeah. So like, you just got to say, OK, we're just dealing with it. So but it is I like I, I wouldn't. So think about that, though. Would you? You can't get rid of it, though, can you? I mean, would you just no, make you it a can't. parking lot like like Epcot? You can't. I mean, that would that would kind of. I mean, Disneyland. I, I heard on an old Jim Hill and Len episode, they talked about like 
where they may have like talked about turning that into a resort or something too, like the TTC, like another like hotel yeah. resort. Then like, well, then where's where's the parking lot going to go? Then like, I don't know. Like, do you shuttle people in? Like, everyone's got to take a bus somewhere. Like, like you you build another like TTC somewhere else. And I think they did talk about that. Like, there was like an old like over by the contemporary. There's like a plot of land, right? Where yeah, they could yeah. just knock down some trees or whatever and turn that into another TTC or something. Well, because there's always been that rumor like Asian like persian or something hotel that, that they tried to draw the pillings for and it, their pilings yep. or whatever and i i mispronounced hobostank or whatever earlier so shout out whatever i probably can't pronounce it because again i'm all this an alternative music so whatever you did say uh yellow card right though yeah okay good at least i'm i'm 50 tonight so stop it's not the yellow card day or anything like that <laughs> That's why I was so distracted earlier because I was reading the comments because everybody was making fun of me. So be nice. Anyway, I know I mispronounced it because everybody was probably like, he's, he still thinks he's dude, saying it that's right. that's the worst thing about being a podcaster, yeah, blogger, still, anything that dude, like where you communicate with. Like, I am the worst at that. So. I mispronounce it. I admit it. I'm, I, I, that was not my generation of music. I get it. I'm from that's the what makes it 80s fun. music yeah. is my jam. That's where makes I come more from. entertaining. Though. Prince. I can Prince? do that. <laughs> Anyway, no, but yeah, I mean, the TTC, though, it, it's it's made for us, right? Because we go down a couple times a year, we take the bus in, because we're always going to be staying in a hotel. So I say you keep it, but, you know, it, it's not, I, I don't want to say Walt Disney World's not made for locals, but it isn't. Like, it just, lo, oh, locals, yeah. it's, it's, for those vacationers. it's for vacationers. Yeah, sure. It's a vacationer's yeah. place, just locals get to enjoy the the spoils of living closely. Which I mean, I still they, would love they to know some numbers because I know, like, obviously, like on site guests, annual pass holders can park there for free. But I still want to know, like, how much rake is being brought in a day at those parking lots? My gosh, because you see, you count, you can see how many cars there, like, every single one of those lots are just full every day. Well, and we've talked about this on the podcast, you and I, and we're on vacation. We've always had this game where we said, if we could just have one minute of like the cash registers just just like give me from 9 13 a.m to 9 14 a.m you know what i'm saying just like on tuesday august 12th okay just pick a random day it doesn't even matter it could be like a you know tuesday august 12th not even a busy day tuesday august 12th from just say 10 14 to 10 15 a.m just look at the registers just property wide at Walt Disney world. Just give me that one minute of, of gross sales. <laughs> you imagine what they would be like? I mean, cause you'd take like whatever, like buttons got hit at court out of Springs or contemporary or magic kingdom, pick up, pick us bills. Or, you know, somebody did something over at, uh, Disney Springs. It'd be crazy. All right. We have another call. 9, 13, the 9, 14 PM though. Cause I feel like there's going to be more spending. happening. Right. Now, but but yeah. I would take the slowest time too. Oh, I don't I care. I I'm, a, I'm not picky. All right. We have another call. He's joining. I us. always joke. Like you're taking it down to a minute. I'm a little being a little more greedy. Like I want a whole day's worth. Oh of just my parking gosh. lot fees. <laughs> and I, just to know if I can retire. You'd be, oh me. dude, you'd be set forever. I have you'd, a little bit of a nest. Oh, you'd be you. totally set. All right. Caller. Hey, who's joining us. Hey, hey, gotten uh, Mike. It's Michael from the chat and run Mike D from the uh, Discord. Hey, thanks oh, for calling hey. in. Thanks, Good Michael. We appreciate it. What's up? Uh, so you guys were talking about Tom Sawyer Island a few minutes ago, and it brought back a memory of when I went to Tom Sawyer Island in the late 80s, and uh, Michael remembered this. I rode the raft with Greg Evigan <laughs> when he was on My Two Dads. What, who was it? And uh, we rode the Greg Evigan, who was on My Two Dads, oh my gosh. Uh, BJ and the Bear, all that stuff. <laughs> yes. Yes. He, now we're talking. We were the only, my cousin and I were the only two people on the raft with him as we rode over to Tom Sawyer Island. So even back in the late 80s, nobody was going over to Tom Sawyer Island, apparently. So. Oh, man. But uh, that reminded me of that when you guys were talking about it. But I, I will miss that area with the water and the boat and just the scenery of it. But it definitely does need to be uh change to something else or have better access to the island one or the other is it see again i'm torn right because it is they're going to get way more return on investment on the new updated area yeah. right because i and i've heard all the arguments because i've been reading about this forever just like we all have right they're not selling merchandise at all on anything tom Sawyer island you know that land <laughs> no. it, it's hard to get to there's there's a lot of reasons why to get rid of it but there's also a beauty to that that river and you know the, the just the aesthetics of it the peacefulness of it and 
all that, which I just hope that when they bring in this new area that's going to feature cars, that there are water features. You know, there are streams and waterfalls, which I think there was in the concept art. I just hope that they, you know, make it kind of, and it looks like it will be, you know, kind of a, like looking like the West, you know, rocks and waterfalls and springs and rivers and lots of water too. If they do that, I'm pretty good. Yeah, that I think that's the, the key. They have to keep some kind of water along there to separate it from, uh, you know, Frontierland and Liberty Square and all that to make it something separate. And also, to, it's so hot and it could be so hot in that area if they just clear out everything you'll have another fantasy land situation where it's just like super, super hot with just all concrete, you know? So I, I hope they do that. But uh, we're, we're also uh, getting ready for our first Disneyland trip in uh, three weeks, I think three or four weeks, something like that. Uh, our first time out there. I've only been to the original California adventure uh, back when they had superstar limo. <laughs> uh, I've never actually been to Disneyland itself. So uh, we're going for uh, like five days and, and just spending the whole time there. We, we got the DVC. We actually lucked out and we're able to trade into the deep or able to wait list the DVC there, uh, Disneyland Hotel. And we got in there for two days. And then uh, the rest of the time we're off property and just walking over. So that's the we're perfect super combination excited for heading out there. Like, I love that we're like getting a wait list, but I mean, you might as well, I hope you bought some lottery tickets that day. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, did it one day at a time. Or <laughs> one day at a time. <laughs> but uh, I like that combination, right? Because like, yeah, you're gonna stay on site for a couple nights, do the you know, do the new tower there, and then I, I don't mind the off property stuff, and it, it does definitely does save you some money. Sometimes you have shorter walks depending on where you're at to the parks too. So I like that combination of the split stay there. Well done there, Mike. Yeah, yeah, we're well, we're hitting uh, we're hitting Disneyland Hotel at the end, which is awesome. So we'll yeah. like finish up there. And then uh, fly back home to Jersey. And uh, <laughs> so I got to ask you, though, California. how did you go to DCA without going to Disneyland that first time? Like, the, this was like uh, maybe 2000, 2001, whenever it first opened. And uh, I, we were pretty, you know, we we're pretty young. And my friend wanted to go to DCA. So we went there. And really, the only thing I remember is nobody was there. We ate a lot of tortillas <laughs> in the uh, tortilla factory they used to have. And we rode Superstar Lemo. I remember that vividly. <laughs> so you did all the cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing you can never do again, I did. So, <laughs> so are you going to so go on a gondola and are you going to do swinging or non-swinging? Oh, non yeah, there's no swinging happening. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Yes, you have you, you are yeah. sensible. You are a sensible Mike, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm far too old for that at this point. <laughs> I love DCA though. I'm it's gonna be so much different. It's actually my favorite domestic park. Um, which seems weird. I mean, I love them all, but I love all six domestic parks. So there's something about DCA I just love, probably because I don't go there as often, so would love to have, for you to call in and like give us an update on your thoughts on Disney and Disneyland too. You've never been to Disneyland. I love it. All these new memories you're about to make. Yeah, yeah, we're we're super excited. We were supposed to go in January. We had something come up. We couldn't get out there for the coast to coast, uh, so we pushed it back to October, and we're we're headed out there and uh, just gonna just gonna enjoy it. I mean, I've been to California a million times. Love oh, yeah. California, but uh, just haven't been to uh, Disneyland <laughs> somehow. So I know you're. I know you're that. kind of a. You're kind of a foodie, if I recall, right? So any uh, any plans for some dining while you're out there, even if it's not a, we, at Disneyland? Yeah, you know, we actually haven't looked at the food, at the food yet. I've been leaving <laughs> that to my uh, wife. Uh, but okay. yeah, we, we definitely love our food. So <laughs> we're going to find something one way or the other. Um, for sure. But yeah, we're, we're, I'm just definitely leaving that up to her. She's been planning this. so uh, That's even hopefully. better, right? Like, all right, I'll just show up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, I just show up to the, I'll, I'll drive to the airport, we'll hop on the plane, and I'll see what happens. That's it. That's how you roll, man. And that's Disneyland. <laughs> it's so easy out there. I mean, oh my gosh, Disneyland. I just love Disneyland because everything's so easy out there. And I just got to tell you, Rancho del Zocalo, man. You're out there plenty of time. Rancho del Zocalo in Disneyland. Go to Main Street, mm. hang a left, hang a right, right there. Bam. Oh. So good. I'm just telling you, that's that's why you go. So good. 
Well, hey, yeah, do give us a call yeah. when you get back because I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Because that's uh, been a been a minute since you've been there. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a few years, but uh, yeah, yeah, appreciate listening in. I had a uh, a drink in honor of Scotty uh, while I'm watching yeah. the show here on the TV in the living room, and uh, just wanted to hop on and say hey to you guys, and uh, I'm gonna hop back into the chat, and uh, you guys have a good night. All right, we appreciate it, Mike. Okay. Give us a call though. We uh, don't be a stranger, man. We love seeing you in the Discord, but love having a chance to talk yeah. to folks on Sunday nights. You're, you're- your commentary is great. I love those uh, those trail races you do and all that. You bring a lot of value to the Discord for sure. So I love following along. Uh, trail races are crazy, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't even run outside, oh, man. I don't I don't even get off the treadmill. But hey, that's just you. But what? <laughs> we're we're the same age. Come on, you can still do it. <laughs> what? A, I'm old, man. You, some people are just they're physically. Yes, okay, but yeah, uh, uh, no. Uh, you're you're a bigger man yeah. than I am. You're, you're tougher. The one that we are, uh, so we're landing back from Disneyland real quick. And then the next day I start a 48 hour race. Yeah. No, see, no, uh, uh. <laughs> no, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> you're crazy, <It's> all, <laughs> but I love it. All, but you're crazy. Paved, though. <laughs> you're the man. All That's right, awesome. Mike. Thanks for the call. Uh, love it, man. You have a good night. Have a good night guys. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. That's 48 hours. Scott, do you with I love I love first trips to Walt Disney World, Disneyland Paris, Disneyland, Alana, you name it. I just there's something about that excitement, right? And I can I can hear it in Mike's voice. Like like he's so and like I don't even know what all the plans are doing, but I know I'm excited to be there. So I love it. The thing about Disneyland too is you don't need to have as many plans, I think, as Walt Disney World. You could just walk in. Yeah. Just kind of just discover things. So many minor things at Disneyland. You know, just like great moments with Mr. Lincoln and just the greatest thing there, the petrified tree. Oh, I love the petrified tree. It's where we, it's where we always meet our listeners. Hey, we I know. The petrified tree. That's where we hang oh, out all the time. Exactly. I'm always by the tree. The exactly. Let's go on the sailing ship Columbia. It's right there. Ah, oh, love oh, it. Man. All right. We got to get show. out of here. We had the little technical issue, but it was a good show. I thought we will figure. Hey, remember next week, if it's not working, it's, it's like a jiggle the cord. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the number one uh, troubleshooting thing. Jiggle the cord. It's going to the mixer. So anyway, we are going to be back next Sunday night. We had a lot of folks tuned in tonight. We appreciate that so very much. We're going to keep this going through the fall. So join us next Sunday night, seven o'clock Eastern, six o'clock central, all the places, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, Red? Twitch. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. I Twitch, just looked. Yeah. We had sixty-seven people tuned in on Twitter as I uh, checked in on that one. Just, that. I just flipped it up. So hey, shout out to everybody over there. So uh, yeah, we'll be uh, taking your calls again next week. We'll have the phone lines all squared away and ready to go. Thanks to everybody who called in tonight, Mike and Jason. And uh, don't forget our show is brought to you by the Magic for Less. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney adventure. This week we are working on Disney Destiny cruises. Because we can book that ship starting this week. So come on over and uh, book with us over at themagicforless.com. Get that free onboard credit to spend just like cash during your sailing. Costs exactly the same as booking directly through Disney Cruise Line. So come on over this week over to themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link. Be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon when you do that online shopping. And thank you so very much to our Patreon supporters. You guys make the show possible. You can support us just $5 a month and you'll get our bonus show called Mike in the Midwest. Come over this week. We'd love to have you at patreon.com slash be our guest podcast. And I give this guy a follow on his, uh, first of all, over at Must See Adventures on YouTube. Check that out, first of all, and then follow him on the social media at Epscott for all the updates. So Epscott, E-P-S-C-O-T. I'm at Be Our Guest Mike. Would love your follow as well on Instagram, threads, and X slash Twitter. And of course, please do subscribe to our podcast, Be Our Guest Podcast. Even if you do check us out live, subscriptions help drive all the traffic. So if you could subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, wherever you get the show, just hit the subscribe button so that people know that you are out there. Even if you do tune in live, that really does support the show. All right. So we are going to jump out of here and we'll have the shows this week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We'll be here with some fun podcasts. So we hope you're here with us as well. So for Scotty G, I'm Mike here in Missouri. You guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon.